Now we're going to look at using the time and pitch machine to create a harmony part in the vocal of this particular song that I've picked. Um, the song is Can't Help But Wait by Trey Songs. You may know it, may not. I'm going to play a little bit of it and then, then we'll get started. I can't help but wait. Oh, I can't help but wait. Check it out. Oh. I see you, you with him. He ain't right, but you don't trip. You stand by while he lies, then turn right around and forgive. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a vocal line out of this acapella. This is the instrumental up here at the top, and this is the acapella down here. We're going to take a vocal line out of the acapella part, and we're going to create a minor third harmony to work with the original vocal part that's there. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to use the time and pitch machine located in your sample editor. Now, we've learned about Apple Loops, and Apple Loops are great because they will adjust uh, the pitch based on the key of your um, session and the tempo, and they work in real time. But before there were Apple Loops, there was the time and pitch machine, and it's still very good for specific processes. The thing about the time and pitch machine is it happens in the sample editor, and it actually rewrites the file. So it's a semi-destructive process, and I say semi because you can undo back a certain amount of steps, um, but you only have a certain amount of steps that you can undo depending on what you have it set in your preferences. So we're going to uh, find a phrase here in this session. Let's see. I see you, you with him. He ain't right, but you don't trip. So this section right here where he says, he ain't right, but you don't trip. He ain't right, but you don't trip. That's the part that we're going to harmonize. And the way that we're going to do this, we're going to create another track directly up under this with the exact same setting. So instead of clicking this button right here for create new tracks, I'm going to click the one beside it, which says create a new track with duplicate settings. Because I have the vocal track selected, any setting, you see the volume setting is the only real setting I have here. But if I had plugins, inserts, EQs or anything on this channel strip, it will duplicate that and create a blank channel strip with the same settings it wouldn't bring the audio file down just create a channel strip new track with the same settings so i'm going to click that and here i have a new track created you see the volume is still set at the same thing and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this portion of the audio that i want to make a copy of so we can create a harmony so i'm using my marquee tool he ain't right, but you don't trip. All right, and so what I want to do is take this piece of audio and I want to copy it directly beneath it onto the track below it. He ain't right, but you don't trip. So what I'm going to do is hold down Option, put my mouse in the top half of here so I have my arrow to click and drag straight down. And now what we have is just that part duplicated on another track. He ain't right, but you don't trip. He ain't right, but you don't trip. He ain't All right, so you basically have a little bit of uh, phasing going on there with the two parts laying right up under each other like that. Um, what I want to do now is actually take this piece of audio that I put here on this track below it here, zoom into that, and I want to transpose it a minor third up to create a harmony now because i'm going to do this in the sample editor editor and it's a destructive process whatever i do is going to actually rewrite the audio file on the hard drive so even though i copied this from the original vocal part down here it's still representative of the original audio file that was on the hard drive that was recorded for this vocal line so what I don't want to do is process this file because it's going to change the original file. So with the copied file selected, I want to turn this into its own audio file. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go here on the audio and I'm going to go right here where it says convert regions to new audio files. And when I do that, it asks what I want to call it. I'm just going to call it can't help but wait. H-A-R. Um, harmony 
and I'm going to save it to my audio files folder. And as far as file conversions, I'm not going to convert it to anything. I'm going to make it stay the same sample rate, same bit def, same type of file, uh, stereo conversion. I'm not going to do any of that. And I don't need dither because I'm not changing the bit def. And I'm going to say save. And so what it does is it rewrites this audio file. And now if you look at the name of this audio file, let me go back to the beginning of it here. It says, can't help but wait harm for harmony. So what I want to do is to harmonize that with the portion of the song that was right above it. So instead of getting that phasing, that I actually get a harmony. I'm going to double click the new audio file that we created and it's going to open up in our sample editor. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. I'm going to close out the inspector also so we got a little bit more real estate. And I'm going to play down here. We can pre-listen to this in our wave sample editor, if you will, by clicking this speaker. He ain't right, but you don't trip. All right. And what we want to do is use the time and pitch machine to transpose that up a minor third. The time and pitch machine is found in the sample editor's local menu under the factory tab right here at the top, time and pitch machine. So now when I open up the time and pitch machine, you'll notice that it has an algorithm section here at the top. It's got a tempo section. It's got this pitch section down here at the bottom. We're going to focus on the pitch section and the algorithm. We're not going to change the tempo. We don't want to change the tempo of what he's singing because that's going to throw it out of time with the song. We just want to change the pitch and we want to choose an algorithm to do so with. If you click the algorithms menu, you'll notice that there are about nine algorithms that come with logic. You have version five, any material, monophonic, pads, rhythmic material, beats only, universal, complex, and percussive. These two here at the bottom, the Isotopes Radius Mix and the Isotopes Radius Solo are third-party plugins that I have loaded on my computer. Actually really good algorithms for time stretching, but I'm not going to use them because everybody won't have them to even try this on their computer. So I'm going to use universal which is kind of the general broad default setting for time stretching in logic and so then we want to go down here to the pitch section and in the pitch section what i want to do here is let me uncheck this and set everything to zero back to the default settings okay in the pitch section what i want to do is transpose this part that we made a new file up three semitones Three semitones is equivalent to 300 cents. So three semitones on the keyboard would be basically three half steps, which would be a minor third up. So what I'm going to do right here where it says transpose, I'm going to double click it and I'm going to type in 300. Now watch what happens down here under the harmonic shift when I hit enter here. When I hit enter, it entered 300 cent transposition, but it also says shift the harmonics by 300 cents three semitones. Now, the harmonic shift deals directly with the formants that make up the vocal tone or the instrument tone or whatever the audio file's tone is and character of that particular file. If we shift the harmonics and shift the formants, it actually changes the character of that sound into something other than that instrument or other than that voice. In other words, say for instance, like with a cello, if this was a cello, and we transposed it up 300%, but also shifted the harmonics, it would not sound like a cello anymore. It would sound more like a violin, a much smaller instrument. And if we did this to this vocal part, it's going to make it sound more less like Trey's voice and more like maybe the chipmunks. And I can hit pre-listen and let you hear kind of what it would sound like here. He ain't right, but you don't trip. You hear it? It, it doesn't really sound like his voice anymore. He ain't right, but you don't trip. So we don't want to change the harmonics. We don't want to change those formats. We want to keep those where they originally were. We just want to transpose it by three semitones. So we're going to click the harmonic correction button here. And then we can set this independently of this. And we're going to put the harmonic shift back to zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say process and paste and let it process, and it did really fast there. Now if we listen to this file in the sample editor with pre-listen. He ain't right, but you don't trip. Okay, so 
by itself, it doesn't sound great. And again, these are the algorithms that come with the software. So they're not the best algorithms that you can get for your money. Of course, if you spend the money, you can get some really good ones. Um, but when we blend it in with the actual song, I'll play it back for you. Let me open my inspector because I think I want to turn it down and pan it a little bit. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit and pan it a little so also. And now we'll play it back with that part in there. Do it him. He ain't right, but you don't trip. So now it works beautifully in the song, in the context of the song against the original vocal, because now we have a harmony part that wasn't recorded in the studio that was created using the original audio file that was there and the time and pitch machine. Let's listen to it again. I see you, you with him. He ain't right, but you don't trip. You stand by while he lies. All right. 